So, we have a turbo that no service in Ukraine could cope with. Everything was done, everything was repaired and tuned, but the car gives an error and does not want to go. Now we will try to deal with it. We will put it now on the Geomet flow bench, static calibration, and check if it is correctly adjusted. Okay, let's do that. Finding it in the database. Run it. Waiting for the measurements. Okay. Well, the turbo's almost in tolerance. It's just a little bit out of tolerance. But a 2% deviation. It's insignificant. Okay, now let's check the graph. Okay, the red line is what we checked. The green line is the tolerance. Well, we can consider her pretty well tuned too. No major abnormalities. Now we will take the turbo off this stand and put it on the turbo boost test machine. Now we're going to turn it on and we're gonna try and double check it here. All right, so we've got the turbocharger on the turbo boost test machine. It is a machine for dynamic geometry calibration, turbocharging test. We have pressurized oil being fed into the cartridge. We have an oil temperature of 61 degrees and the turbine is spinning when we tune it. Okay, we go into the base, we go into this mode, we find our turbo. There's 6,000 turbos, 6,000 on test plans. We found the turbo. Okay, well, let's start it up. Let's start it up. Let's see what it shows. The geometry setting shows that everything is fine. But the coefficient that should be in the green or yellow zone, it has a value of 43 although it should be between two and a half and five and a half. This indicates that the turbocharger has some very serious problems. We're going to take it apart and find out what the problem is. Now we're going to take it apart and disassemble it, see what's wrong with it. Something wrong with the geometry or something. Here's the geometry. Here's the turbine shaft. Let's find out what's wrong with it. Now we have a suspicion. The heat shield. It's a little weird. We'll find a new heat shield now and try to compare. Here's our cartridge. We will now disassemble it, after which we will do a full rotor balancing. Here we are pulling out the shaft. Here's our heat shield, which we're confused about. Where's our new heat shield? Let's compare. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference, but there's a bulge here that should be there. We're going to put it in place now. This one's kind of flat. Something's happened to it. Preparing the turbine for reinstallation on the stand. Final touches. Done. Turning on the oil supply. Turbo's in place. Now we run it, see what's changed. Press start.
The turbocharger is accelerating. Let's see. Now you can see it's out of tune. It should be 470. We have 920. And the coefficient is very high. Now we'll try to tune it so it's 470. Let's see what happens. We're stopping. We've unscrewed it. Now we're going to try to adjust it. Turn the thrust screw. Let's see what we got. Screw more. We're trying to get it to 470. Just a little more. That's it. 470. Lock it in. We have a green zone clearance. Here we have a yellow zone, a five. Before that it was 41. Yeah, or 40 something was. The problem was that this heat shield didn't create an airtight seal. And we've got exhaust gases going not through the geometry veins, but bypassing the geometry because of leakage, because of the wrong shape of the heat shield. Why did it become flat? History is silent. After replacing the heat shield and adjusting it on the dynamic flow bench, we give the turbo to the owner and think that he will not have any more problems.